<laughs> G'day guys, how are we going? Well, we're back here again for another another Wednesday night live. Um, but this week, camping gadgets. Now, I'm sure we've all got plenty of camping gadgets in our camp gear when we do go out there camping. But how many of you have got one or maybe a few that cost you five bucks or less? Well, I've got one that I'm going to show you a little bit later on tonight, and it's one that I use pretty much every time I go camping, but we'll show you that a bit later on. So good to see a few of you tuning in already. Uh, I've got Peter there and Renee there. Thanks very much, guys, uh, yeah, for, for dropping in tonight. But, look, if we're just catching up, you know, for the first time tonight, you know, um, tune into my channel here. Um, Tim Bates is my name, and I've got a YouTube channel where I film all my travels and provide a lot of tips and hints throughout those channels, throughout those travels, and, and also um, a lot of separate tips and hints and videos as well. So check it out there if you want to um, have, have a look through the channel. But um, let's get into this because I'll be pretty keen to see um, what got, what what uh, camping gadgets have you guys got that have cost you five bucks or less. It would be a good test. Actually. I could have put up around ten, but I thought let's, let's try it at five and see how we go. So we've got a few people dropping in there. Hugh, how you going, mate? Yes, you, yes, you did. <laughs> how you going there, mate? Nanzac, g'day, how you going? Uh, Matthew, oh, Bricky's Trail. You've got an old Bricky's Trail. Yeah, well, I've certainly got one too. My old Marshall Town is is uh, sitting out there in the camp box, mate, that I cut the uh, the point off it, and I use it a lot. But that's not what I'm going to show you tonight because I tell you what, that trail costs a lot more than five bucks. So um, big Trev, how you going there, mate? Good to see you. Thanks very much for dropping in. And Jay, thanks very much for, for coming and checking out. Righto. So um, I'll show you the camping gadget that I've got for five bucks now. I've had this gadget for oh, probably the best part of maybe six, seven years, and I use it all the time. Every time I go camping, I use it all the time. And it's this little gadget here. Now, you're probably wondering, what do you do with that? Well, it's – um, and it's – it cost me – actually, this thing cost me two bucks. That's how much it cost. That's why I thought we'll put this test and see how many of you guys have got one under five bucks. So this was two bucks. And what I do with this, I've got a pole here. This, so this is my tent pole, right? And all I do with this is I put it under there, screw it on there like so. Now, how simple is this now? You wonder how could something so simple cost only two bucks? Now, have a look at that. You probably now, what, what are you going to do with it? Well, the next thing is now I use this for hanging my, not my hat, that's for sure, although I probably could have hang my hat off it. But what I do with it is to hang my rubbish bags off. So the rubbish bag just hangs over like that, like so, and it keeps it nicely off the ground, away from all the critters and animals and whatever else because my tent poles are up, you know, sort of fairly high. So that's my gadget there. You know, two bucks that thing fair income cost me. I bought it at the... Um, Full drive show many years ago from a friend of mine who was actually working for a camping store at the time. And um, I went away with them camping on, on a trip and I, and I saw them using one of these and I thought, feeding them, I've got to get myself one of these. So when I caught up next time, there we go. That's my gadget there. Two bucks from the uh, full drive, one of the full drive shows a few years ago. So I'll be pretty keen to see what have you guys got. Now, be honest, apart from duct tape and zip ties and that sort of stuff, what have you got in your camp box that um, costs around five bucks or less? Be a good little test for you. So who else we got going there? Four Wheel on New South Wales. How are you going there, mate? Thanks so much for dropping in. Um, long live the three litre, mate. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was an interesting video and um, been very popular, the old um, video I made there about my ZD30. Uh, it's been a, been a great, great uh, little motor, that's for sure, uh, over the time. Uh, Mitch. What a, what a great idea. Well, it is, mate. It's, it's such a simple idea, you know, and, you know, when, when you go away, you know, what do you do, what do you guys do with your rubbish bags, you know, when, when you go away camping? Where, where do you put them? Well, this this is just simple and easy. You know, with the bag down here falling off and there it goes. It just hangs on there like that and it keeps, you know, the rubbish bags off, off the ground and away from all the critters. And feeding them, I would use this gadget out of all the gear I've got in my camp box and, Look, I've got truckloads of camp gear that, you know, I use on a regular basis, but this fair income would get used every single time when I go out whether I because I set my awning up pretty much all the time and whether I'm setting up my extension awning, whatever else, wherever there's a pole standing up, this can clamp onto it and it's just an absolute cracker. So 
what have you guys got? I'd be pretty keen to, um, you know, hear, hear what uh, simple camping gadgets you guys have got. Uh, Gary, how are you going there, mate? Thanks very much for dropping in. Um, uh, what's that going to Anzac? I, I hang a rubbish bag um, on the tow bar. Yeah, look, and I, I've, I used to do that too, you know, down low there, but, um, you know, and it's probably handy there. At least it's a bit of a, you know, gives you a bit of something bright and to see, you know, so people don't stub their, their chins and everything else on a tow bar, but, um, but it's down low. So that's why I like this idea and, you know, you don't have to bend down to, you know, put your rubbish in at the end of the day or whatever, whenever you want to go to it. It's always just there at a, you know, nice height and it's just a crack and simple idea for, for a couple of bucks. It's just an absolute beauty. And you've got to wonder, you know, how do even make it for a couple of bucks? But it's a beauty. So that's one I use. Yeah, certainly you use a lot. Um, John, what do you got going there? Silicon egg, egg rings. Um, that's not a bad idea, mate. So silicon egg rings. So do you poach you poaching eggs with those, I suppose, with the silicon egg, egg rings, are you, mate? And I don't mind um, poached eggs. I um I do those pretty good, or even even egg rings, you know, if you're gonna put them in the frying pan. Uh keeps your eggs all in intact there, that's for sure. So that's not a bad idea. Uh James, what's going on there, mate? Do you know where we could get them them made from? Um Mate, I haven't seen them for a long time. As I said earlier on, you know, I've had this gadget for the uh, best part of six, seven years. And so, you know, you could probably try some camp stores or whatever. Some, you know, they, they might have them certainly around. I, I really don't know. But um, there's bound to be someone out there or you could very probably easily get them made because, you know, they're, they're a very simple little thing but so, so effective and does the job really, really well for keeping your camp gear or your rubbish bags up off the ground. Um, so there you go. Uh, Cheffy, what's going on there, mate? Uh, I brought a chair from a for, for a for a dollar from a flea market in Mornington Peninsula ten years back, and still going strong for a buck, mate. That's that's awesome. <laughs> from um, my old uh, hunting ground on down on the Mornington Peninsula ten years ago, and it's still going strong. That's that's a that's a good one there, mate. Must have been a great great uh, bloody good chair, that's for sure. Um, so there we go, mate. Um, what have we got there? Damn and stubby holder. Well, yeah, there's always plenty of use for stubby holders, that's for sure. Uh, plenty of those those going around. Uh, Matt Saunders, what's going on there, mate? I uh, love your work. Keep it up. Thanks very much, Matt. Um, greatly appreciate uh, the feedback there. Uh, Steve, thirteen thirteen, what's going on? Great idea to use that this tool off your camp table. Yeah, well, you could you could put on your camp your camp table legs. Um, keeps it near the stove while you're cooking. That's absolutely yeah. There's one I haven't thought of because I've never used it on my camp camp table legs. But look, absolutely you could because there's a fair bit of adjustment in it. So, you know, this is what this pole is probably about 20 mil in diameter. So, you know, there's a fair there's a heap of thread on it. So this would probably take, you know, anything up to I don't know maybe 40 50 mil diameter in, in pole width. So, yeah, you can certainly hang it off off your table legs, and it's as you say, you know, then it's close to where where you're cooking all your stuff. That's a top idea. Um. Four wheel on what's going there, mate? Silicon egg rings. Yeah, a few people have mentioned that. Would cook eggs that uh, that are made from <laughs> made from silicon. Well, you know, I'm not sure where they would probably go. I don't know. They obviously must go because I've heard a few people sort of using those silicon egg rings, and they probably collapse, you know, and fold up nice and easily. So they're probably a good thing. Um, Renee Hobbs, what's going on there? I use um, what do you use a crock bin? On my tent, uh, tent poles. What's a crock bin? I'm not not quite sure what a crock bin is. Never um, heard of those, um, but it costs thirty bucks. Yeah, right. Eh? Um, not sure. I haven't seen those crock bins, but I must um, check those out and see what they're all about. Uh, Kevin, what's going on, there, mate? Kevin Palmer. Any chance of a close up of the? Hang on. All right. I'll take it off, mate. Never give you a good close look at it. Just a sec. Hang on. So here we go. So that's it there. It's just um, just a little steel rod with a thread on it. You know, the thread goes all the way through there for about sort of 40 mil, and then there's just a little flap on the end of it there. Um, suppose you can see see what's going on there. So that shows you sort of what it does. And then, as I say, then it just screws onto, um, onto the pole or table legs and, and that sort of stuff. But, yeah, look, it's, it's a cracking idea, and I feel like I love it, and I use it. All, all the damn time. Um, just, as I say, just goes on there like so and just screw it up and put it whatever whatever height you want, you know, um, head height or 
shoulder height, whatever, wherever you want it. And there we go, it's locked off. Um, so it's not going to slip up and down, you know. It's a good, good solid mount. And for a couple of bucks, it's an absolute cracker. Um, so, Josh, what's going there? Um, you could use one of one of each on each pole, or you could, you, look, you could have a heap of them. You know, it depends how many poles you've got going on. Uh, if you've got a big family going away, you know, we've got a heap of rubbish bags on the go, or you might be putting rubbish in one and recycle or whatever in the other. Well, this would certainly do the job, mate, and you could have a couple of rubbish bins going on for sure. Um, again, Josh, uh, you could use one on each pole, and the awning, yeah, and rope, and, and it's got, yeah, got a clothesline as well. Yeah, we could certainly do all that with a clothesline, um, but that's – you know, you could hang hang the clothesline off it, uh, loop, loop off there. Look, it's got probably a stack of uses. You've just got to use your imagination, really, on on what you uh, what you might want to sort of use it for. But I pretty much use it for hanging rubbish bags off, and it's absolute cracker. Um, Birdos, what's going there, mate? Uh, five bucks, uh, Kmart cutlery organizer, rolls and foil, glad wrap, etc. All fits perfectly in them. Yeah, right. Eh? That that sounds like a good good idea, mate. With all the other utensils, yeah. Absolutely top idea for five bucks. You get all that um, cutlery organizer. That that's a cracking idea, mate. Uh, thanks very much for sending that one in. Um, what's going on there? I, I drive Nissan. What's going on? Good work, loving the live feeds, mate. Yeah, thanks very much for for dropping there. Um, be good to know where where a few of you sort of coming in from. Yeah, you know, some of my videos here getting some pretty good um, contact from overseas and that sort of stuff too. So I'm um, pretty keen here. Here we go. Right, it's just I mentioned that we've got Anthony there coming in from the new UK. Sounds very very hot morning here in the UK. Very hot. That's unreal, mate. Thanks very much for dropping in. There we go, all the way from the UK. That that's awesome. Um, and Kerry, what's going on there? Uh, love your work, uh, especially the camp oven cooking. Yeah, look, thanks very much for that. I um, pretty much enjoy, you know, all the camp oven cooking stuff, that's for sure. Made a few videos from those, and there will be certainly a few more of those um, you know, coming through. That's that's got for sure there. Got some plenty of ideas as far as camp oven cooking goes. Um, got pl plenty of ideas going on with that. So there'll be a lot more of those coming through. Uh, for what's going on? Uh, another thing that... Uh, that is cheap and works a treat. Uh, where are we? For us, is a cutlery and, and big pencil case for the Kmart. Yeah, that's top, top idea, you know, for the old uh, the zip up pencil cases there. Put all your cutlery and stuff in there. Three bucks or four bucks and plenty of room. Absolutely, that's a top idea, mate. You could um, put all your knives and forks and whatever else and, uh, in one of those zip up pencil cases. That's a top idea, mate. Um, let's go on there on Cage Expeditions. How are you going, mate? Good to see you there, finally dropping in. Uh, going really well there, mate, and um, plenty going on as, as it sort of always is. So, um, yeah, it's always going on. Uh, Stu, dunny roll holder. Well, funny you mention that because um, I saw a cracking little idea, which I might make one yet. I'm going to make it out of a out of a, an old um, butter tub container, but... More on that maybe a bit later on down the track, but it was a ripper idea. So um, we might touch on that a bit, bit later on. Greg, how are you going there, mate? Thanks very much for, for dropping in. Um, Burdos, what's going there? George and myself, uh, yourself, should definitely do an episode together. Well, we should, mate. Um, pretty keen to always chat about any sort of opportunities like that. Um, Four wheel on the, the pencil case is easy, easy fits under your seat or in your drawers too. Look, it fold down nice and flat, I suppose. So, you know, the old pencil case, that would be, um, yeah, so it's certainly a top idea for putting all your knives and forks and whatever else is going on with that. So, Stu from Mafra, thanks very much, mate. Sort of just down the road from, from Traffy, not too far away. Well, Mafra's a cracking little spot there. Quite often go through there from heading to Dargo. Some of them go around the back way through Mafra. Uh, great little town. So there we go, guys. Um, that pretty much uh, sort of is that video for the night about my gadget there, my camping gadget, for under five bucks, and I use it nearly every single time. It's an absolute beauty. Um, but just one last one there. What's going on, Marty? Uh, down in Cockatoo. Thanks, mate. Cockatoo's just down the other way down there, towards back towards um, Melbourne sort of thing. Homemade camp box made out of free old pellets to fit um, – Look, the old palace, they're getting used for all sorts of things, aren't they? So that's that's a cracking idea. And uh, put your pots and pans and your three-burner gas cooker in it, four-kilo gas gas bottle. That's um, very um, intuitive there, mate, using the old pellets for 
making up some stories there for your camping gear. That's a cracking idea, mate. Uh, Big Trev, um, it's going to make the old milk crates with the toilet lid. Yeah, look, milk milk crates have been used for for donkeys years, and they for all sorts of things. I mean, I certainly used them flat out for you know through my building trade days and carrying all sorts of gear in them. That they're still living on the old milk crates, and um, they look just a strong, sturdy box, and you know you can carry sort of anything in them. So yeah, the milk crates is a great idea, especially if you want to make a toilet toilet out in the bush. They're they're a top idea. Um, David's going there, mate, um, from Rainy Sunshine Coast. Rainy Sunshine Coast, right, eh? Um, we've got a bit of the same weather going on down here at the moment too there, David. It's um, a bit ordinary down here at the minute. Although we've had, we have had a really good run just, I've got to say, though, the last sort of five sort of days have just been absolutely beautiful down here. And, yeah, that's in Victoria. We do get some good weather down here, mate. So um, it's not just always up in there in sunny Queensland, but it does happen down here. But we've got a bit of a uh, couple of days of uh, some pretty ordinary weather coming with some rain and snow, and which is, that's probably not a bad thing. So we'll see how we go with it all. Uh, Paul, how are you going there, mate? Thanks very much for dropping in. Appreciate that. Um, Alan Bates, oh, Alan Bates, here we go. He's got the surname, same as me, You're going on here. Uh, ear, ear plugs for the snorers. <laughs> I'll tell you what, mate, I've, I've set my swag up on the ground around sort of a few people camping over the years and certainly some people certainly, uh, yeah, can snore all right, that's for sure. Um, so some um, ear plugs would be certainly very handy. I'm sure you could buy those for under five bucks, no worry about that. And, and um, that would... Uh, block out some of the noise from some of those snorers that, you know, sound like chainsaws and freight trains throughout the night. But, um, no, that'd be all good. Uh, Kevin, what's going on there, mate? So that clamp is your most used thing in your most useless <laughs> your bought, most useless thing I've bought. I tell you what, it's not useless, mate, because I use it all the time. Um, so that's why I've, I've, I've sort of shown you this thing. It's an absolutely fantastic little gadget. And, yeah, I'll continue to use it because um, it's very, very handy. Um, Dallas, g'day, how you going there? Thanks for much dropping in. Um, Kevin, g'day, Kevin, how you going, mate? Kevin, or Greg Palmer, how you going? Saying g'day, Kev. Kevin, no worries. Um, Philip, what's going there? Uh, use a, use a, a cut-off roll of a chain to attach my table to the canopy and made a shovel holder and some pipe and a couple of nuts and bolts. Welder was required. Well, yeah, that, that's a top idea too. They're making something up um, pretty simple and easy just with a few bits and pieces. And if you're handy with a welder, well, that would certainly do the job. So there you go, guys. Well, that's my little gadget for, for this week. Um, and tune in next week because what I've got lined up for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have a chat to you guys about because we're hopefully going to be able to start maybe getting back out there camping, um, you know, in the, in the next few weeks and hopefully for the long weekend. But I'm going to chat to you guys about some places where you guys can base camp, particularly if you've got camper trailers and off-road caravans. Um, so I've got to, I'm going to do a bit of a series there. I'm going to cover a lot of the areas around the high country where you can set up safely with camp trailers and caravans, base camp, go out, in and out, do your, do your touring around, and then come back to your nicely set up camp trail and caravans. So tune in for that next week, Wednesday night, 7 p.m., same time, and we'll get into a few of those over the next few weeks. And then a range of other topics I've certainly got lined up in the weeks going after that. So thanks very much, guys, for uh, dropping in tonight and um, having a look at my five-buck gadget here. And I uh, look forward to seeing you guys next week on uh, same bat channel. So you guys have a good week and we'll talk to you then. Thanks very much for dropping in. See you later on, guys.